Good afternoon. We would like to welcome you to our Women's Ignite Network, this segment for the month of May. And we have again with us today, Dr. Barbara Nsua, our local family doctor right here in Groveland, Florida. And today she's gonna to be talking to us about cervical cancer prevention, something very important for women to know about. So come on in and join us. And the next voice that you hear will be Dr. Barbara Nsua. Hello, ladies. Good afternoon. It's so nice to be with you again today. And today we are going to talk about cervical cancer and its prevention. What causes it and how we can prevent it. And I hope that you've gotten yourself seated behind your computer or using your smartphone to just um, listen and see what you can learn from today's presentation. Okay, so what is cervical cancer? Cervical cancer is cancer of the mouth of the uterus. So how do we prevent this terrible cancer, which affects about half a million women all over the world each year? And in the US, um, about we have about 14,000 people affected every year and 2,000 women die every year from cervical cancer. So what is it? Like I said earlier, it's cancer of the mouth of the womb or the uterus. And it mostly results from infection with a virus. This virus is called human papilloma virus. And we normally just say HPV. That stands for human papilloma virus. There are hundreds of human papilloma viruses which can infect human beings, but um, about a hundred uh, kind of more serious ones. And out of that, um, about 14 can cause cancer and they are known as high risk human papilloma virus. Now, cervical cancer results from infection with a number of these, they've got different numbers. And with cervical cancer, we have number 16 and number 18, causing about 70% of cervical cancer in women. Now, how, are, how is this virus transmitted? It is transmitted through sexual contact with a person who is infected with um, human papilloma virus. And, um, it can happen at the first sexual intercourse or down the road. It can also happen in young people. But the good thing is that with a lot of young people, they are able to clear the virus when they get infected. Um, so a lot of young people, when they get infected by the age of 21, they've been able to clear their, the, the virus using their own immune system. So that is something good that goes for them as uh, when they get infected. However, we know that, like I told you, it's spread by sexual contact or skin to skin contact. And, and when that happens, you can get infected. And not only does it infect the cervix, but it can, the virus can infect the vagina. It can affect uh, the penis of men. It can affect um, the back of your throat if you are engaged in oral sex. And it can also affect uh, the anal passages as well. But today we are going to concentrate on its effect on cervical cancer. I have already mentioned to you that um, cervical cancer is probably the fourth most common cancer that affects women. And on the screen, you see the picture of a woman's cervix. Now this cervix looks very nice. This is a normal cervix that has not been infected by um, any infection, including uh, HPV. Like I mentioned in the US, about 12,000 people are diagnosed with cervical cancer every year and about 4,000 die from it, from the disease each year. Now, Black women tend to have a higher incidence of the infection as well as death rate 
in the U.S., about 10 out of 100,000 black women will die who are diagnosed with cervical cancer will die. And in, with women, it is uh, with uh, Caucasians, it's about four or five women per 100,000. So you see that there's uh, a difference as to what, what, your, what, what your race is. And this is just because of things like inadequate care, black women being diagnosed at a later stage of the cancer, and also black women not being screened because they are not going for the prevention tests that we all know called pap smears. Now, this is a picture of how cervical cancer progresses. As you can see in the very first one on my left is a normal cervix. And then a woman gets infected and you see that the cervix area, the cells start changing. And if you look at the cervix head on, in the first slide down, it looks like a donut. That's how the cervix appears. And the first one looks pretty good, no issues there. But as you move down the, 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 towards your right side, you see the cervix is infected and it, it, the cells have changed. And so you may see some bleeding around there. You may see that the cells are looking, the, 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 the surface of the cervix is looking very abnormal. Now, what can we do to prevent cervical cancer? We've already discussed that it's a very serious cancer, but it is preventable. Okay, so there are a number of things we can do. And if you look at this circle, um, some of the ways are avoid exposure, exposure to HPV and STDs, which are sexually transmitted diseases. And it's important uh, that women protect themselves from getting these infections. Then the second thing you could do is to get a pap smear or get a test for HPV testing. And we would talk about that a little bit later. We also have um, avoiding high risk sexual behavior. So if there are women who have multiple sexual partners, they can get the infection. So if you avoid that, then you would not get that. Then we also have those who smoke. If you quit smoking, that will help. And one of the most important things I mentioned before was getting a pap smear and getting tested with the HPV testing. Sometimes we do these tests together when you go for a pap smear. And another important thing is vaccination against HPV. For over 10 years now, children have been vaccinated against HPV together with their normal uh, vaccination uh, program that they get from their pediatricians and their family medicine physicians. And the good thing is that women can also be vaccinated. In fact, you can be vaccinated up to the age of 45 and you can be vaccinated with the four or nine, uh, four or nine HPV viruses that tend to cause um, the cervical cancer. So that is so important. And I want you to realize that, that as a woman, if you are 45 years or below, you can go to the health department or you can go to your family uh, physician and ask if they offer vaccination for HPV. And if you have young daughters or who are teenagers or even young ladies in their 20s and 30s and up to the age of 45, they can all be vaccinated against human papilloma virus. There are two vaccines that are available in this country. The vaccines have been around for over 10 years and they are very safe. So that is something that you should consider um, if you've not never been vaccinated. So like we've mentioned, these are some of the preventative things that I mentioned, which were presented in the circle that I had uh, shown you in the previous uh, slide. Now, as you know, pap smears 
most women have been having pap smears for years. These days, what we do is that we do what we call co-testing. If a woman is above the age of 30 years, when you go for a pap smear, they would normally do the pap where they scrape the cervix, the, the surface of the cervix to look for abnormal cells, or they would also do an HPV test together. And we call that co-testing. And the good thing is that if you've had a pap for three years or more, and they've all been normal, and you've also had the HPV test and it came back as negative, then you can have your pap smear done every three to five years. It's not every year anymore like we used to have them. So that gives you women a break, okay? But that doesn't mean that you should not visit your family physician or your gynecologist, sometimes for a pelvic exam. If anything happens like pain, or discharge or anything abnormal, make sure that you go and see your doctor about it. Um, even if the three years or the five years interval for the pap smear is not up yet. Now, when a cervix gets infected with HPV, you don't immediately get cervical cancer. It goes through a process, as you saw from the slides that we showed before. Um, the cells may start being abnormal, then they gradually get severely abnormal, and then it takes about 10 years if you are infected with the high-risk HPV to develop cervical cancer. But we don't want to get that. So just to recap, cervical cancer is caused mostly by a virus known as HPV, human papilloma virus. The good thing is that there are preventive measures that are available. The two most important ones is having a pap smear and an HPV test done uh, during your well woman exam. And the second one, you can be vaccinated with the vaccines that are available. So ladies, with that, I come to the end of my presentation about cervical cancer prevention. And it's all in my book. Remember, we talked about that every time we come on the air. You can go to the chapter and read about cervical cancer. And also, you can also go to my web. I have a web um, address, www.barbaraenswa.com. And when you go there, I have a lot of articles there you can read. And some of these videos that we've been doing are also present on that website. And Miss Linda also has it on YouTube. We thank you so much for being with us. Until next time, take charge of your health. God bless. Bye. Thank you so much, Dr. Barbara. I hope you all enjoyed listening to the great information that she provided for women today. I tell you, knowledge is power. And the more we know, the more we can protect ourselves from all of these diseases and also take better charge of our health. We want to invite you to join us next month. We'll be back again with Dr. Barbara Ensure for health and wellness tips for our Women's Ignite Network. Thank you so much for joining us. And until next time, Shalom.